It's the Charity Shield. Wigan take on Leeds. Wigan, the Grand Slam winners against Leeds, the team that pushed them closest of all last season. We're live and exclusive here on Sky Sports from the Royal Dublin Showground. And the Leeds public have turned up over here in their numbers. And just look at the Wigan's strip on your right as Henry Paul leads them out with Alan Tate alongside him. Wigan in their old hooped jerseys because this is centenary year and all the clubs in the Premiership this year are going to be playing in their original jerseys and their original strips. Alan Tate, the Leeds fullback, he knows what it's like to win the Charity Shield, having beaten Wigan three times for Witness. Now he's trying to do the same again for Leeds. Alan Tate and one or two of the other Leeds players. There's Leeds-born Jason Robinson, Furley in the Wigan side, the Lance Tro Trophy winner in last year's Cup final. But Alan Tate and a few of the Leeds players visited the dog track last night in the... Leeds captain for the day, James Lowes, he picked up a 33 to 1 winner. So it's been a lucky weekend for him. Can it be a lucky weekend for his club? And will he topple Jason Robinson and the rest? The Wigan side. Henry Paul, Robinson, Twigamala, Connolly, Radlinski, Wright, and Murdoch. That's the way the backs line up. Here's the forwards. Kelvin Skerritt, Martin Hall, and Neil Cowie, the front row. Simon Horton, Mick Cassidy, and Andrew Farrell. And on the bench, Rob Smythe, Terry O'Connor, Andrew Johnson, and Matthew Knowles. Terry O'Connor, the oldest of those, he's 23. Coach Graham West, of course. There's the lucky captain, 33 to 1 winner. At the dog track last night, I wonder if that's a lucky omen for the men from Yorkshire. The backs, Alan Tate, Jim Fallon, Kevin Iro, Francis Cummins, and Paul Cook. Tony Kemp and Marcus Vasilikopoulos. And up front, Neil Harmon, James Lowes, Sini Familo, George Mann, Gary Mercer, and Mike Forshaw. And on the bench, all teenagers. Marvin Golden, David Gibbons, Adrian Morley, and Nick Fazard. And the coach, Hugh McGowan. Match referee is Russell Smith, the referee of the year. And, of course, he took control of the big occasion at Wembley between these two as well. So, important moments for mascots, referees and captains alike. The commemorative photos. And a good crowd has turned out here in Dublin to watch this. Plenty of spectators from Wigan and from Leeds, of course. And... A good first battering of locals too. Nigel Wright in the number six jersey for Wigan. Rejoining the club. He was on loan at Wakefield last season and he will be delighted to be back in here. And Steve-O, there's a young man who's anxious, I think, to make an impact. Yes, well, when he first went to Wigan from Wakefield, it really did just affect the guy. But he has the big opportunity now. In fact, the standoff position today, I think, will be the key factor on both sides. Of course, Tony Kemp, the classic Kiwi, playing his first game for Leeds and I think whoever gets on top in that department will steer their side to a very good win indeed so here we are live and exclusive from the Royal Showground in Dublin the goal charity shield as it is being uh, known over here the goal charity apparently is aiding the third world there will be a collection at half time referee just making sure the players are behind the line as the kickoff came as per the brand new charter for referees issued by Greg McCallum during the summer look out for one or two subtle little changes welcome committee for Mike Forshaw in a Leeds jersey against his former club Lowe's gets the ball away to Harmon and this is George Mann and a traditionalist like you Steve-O you'll enjoy seeing these old cherry and white hoop jerseys oh it's tremendous to see and oh back still up there Twigamala picks up the ball. There you see the impact. It was a good tackle low from Neil Cowie. Man coming in over the top. Sini Fermato dropping the ball. 
and Leeds penalised for holding the tackle player Jason Robinson down. Russell Smith very quick to penalise and it's a penalty to Wigan. Well, you can see Mike Foreshaw helped along by Neil Harmon. Russell Smith very quick to take control of this game. And it's Foreshaw giving away what should be quite an easy penalty attempt here. Mike Foreshaw, who uh, actually played for Wigan in two charity shields, 1990-91. Signed during the summer, well and truly now part and parcel of the lead setup. Taking over from Ellery Hanley, of course, now departed. Quite a gap for both these sides to fill. Wigan with the likes of Botica, Clark and Betts elsewhere. And Leeds, of course, with Hanley now signed up in Australia as well. You're right, Eddie. It is great to see those wonderful stripes, or should we say hoops, for so many years. I'm not that old, but it certainly does bring, <laughs> bring the old smile to my face, and I'm sure to many rugby league fans throughout the world. Andy Farrell then, no Fran Botica anymore. Left-footed goal kicker. First points of the new season for Wigan. 2-0, the Grand Slammers are ahead. This is the mistake for Milo, but look at the tackle there. Neil Cowie really putting the shoulder into it. And the big fella could not control the football. A bad mistake. They paid the price. Two points to Wigan. Neil Cowie had a great season last season for Wigan and Leeds restart. Tony Kent kicks off. Oh, Martin Hall drops it, but he was facing his own line. The ball went backwards. Got away with it there. Pretty difficult as well. The ball hung in the wind. Use of the elbow by Kelvin Skerritt. Referee's whistle blew immediately. You see it lifted up there. Mercer really did catch it on the jaw. A few words being said to the big prop forward, Kelvin Skerritt, and rightly so. He shakes his head in disbelief, but we saw it quite clearly, and so did the referee. Here it is. Look how he raises it up. That's dangerous play. So the penalty for Leeds takes them to within five metres of that Wigan line. Leeds, of course, smarting from the humiliation of Old Trafford. It can't be talked about in any other word other than that. This is Tony Kemp. He gets it away to Forshaw. Good tackling from Nigel Wright. Over the top came Simon Horton. On the charge is Gary Mercer. Tackled again by Cowie. Captain for the day, James Lowes. Trying to make an oblique run towards the line. That's how close leads are. Test here of this Wigan defence. And that's good play from Kemp who gets it back to Nasser. And he was dumped to the ground by Cassidy. It's the last tackle. Four minutes gone. Wigan ahead. Gary Connolly picks up. Knock on. Gary Connolly, furious. Nice little kick too from Kemp. It was powerhouse there. There was nothing that Connolly could do about it. And it was a knock on. Oh, definitely. Little doubt about it. Well, maybe not. It came off the knee. Oh, I think he'd got his hands to it as well. Had a second look then. Maybe it came off the knee. Here we go again. Oh, yes, he's got a case as Connolly. You've beat me again. Start of the season. And Craig Murdoch thought he got one against the head then. The referee pulling them back, though. Murdoch in for Sean Edwards, who's injured. Marcus Vasilikopoulos in the number seven jersey for Leeds. Ball comes out, and it's a mess. And Leeds, that ball's over the line. The referee wants the scrum to reform them. Well, what's he given? Has he given a Leeds player there? He used the referee. Murdoch trying to get through. Now, with the interference of the referee, I think he's brought it back to the same scrum. That's right. And he is right. High row to Kemp. Here's Kemp again. Tackled by Connolly, but still gets the ball away to Alan Tate. Good run from Tate, but he loses it. He claims that he had the ball reefed away from him. Well, it might be the charity shield. There's little charity out there, and Murdoch did steal the ball. Little doubt. Well, things are hotting up out there. Getting back to that scrum win there, you could see that Marcus Vasilikopoulos 
He's not a halfback. It is going to be a big problem for Leeds. And he was not all that quick around the scrum base. Well, but, Tony, Tony Kemp's in six now for Leeds. I wonder whether in the future Gary Schofield might have to revert to seven. Try 13. And where will Dean Bell play? He won't, he'll coach. I thought he was player coach, but we'll see. Horton gets the ball away to Paul. Paul dumped it over the top. Alan takes there to tidy up the danger. Look at the wall of Wigan attackers, though, closing on him and pull him down. This is Paul Cook, the winger. Full back against Bramley last week in a pre-season friendly. Both these sides actually have come into this game after matches last weekend. Wigan beating Warrington in the annual Locker Cup. And Leeds beating Bramley. And a match actually that made a little bit of history because it was played at the Leeds Rugby Union ground. Kemp under pressure from Horton, but still gets the kick away. Robinson picks it up. Remember the two tries Robinson scored at Wembley against this lead side. They really did count, catch them napping that day. Here's Henry Paul. Saw him on Sky Sports this summer in the Trans-Tasman Test for his country, New Zealand. Martin Hall of Dummy Half. That was Murdoch, and he gives it to Skerritt, this time keeping the elbows firmly tucked into the sides. Pretty solid defence from both sides, and it looks like Tony Kemp's down with an injury. Lovely run from Farrell. He's got support out wide from Connolly. Tipped it inside to Nigel Wright, and Nigel Wright scores. Three tries against Warrington last week in that Locker Cup match, and one try here already for Wigan in the charity shield. Nigel Wright's back in business. Well played by Wigan. They caught Leeds very light on the blind side. You can see they're held off. You've got to make your tackles there. Vasilikopoulos easily pushed away. Connolly back on the inside. It's an easy run there for Nigel Wright. And did that look like a trip or an attempted one? He's happy, he's Nigel Wright, but they really did catch Leeds nappy. They failed to move up on the blind side, and this is a poor attempt. Went far too high. You can't go high on such a big man like the loose forward, Andrew Farrell. Not the best pass on the inside, but Nigel Wright takes it gleefully. And that was a very poor attempt, going in with the legs. And such a poor attempt that Vasilikopoulos has been sent off by the referee, Russell Smith. Immediately, that try was awarded Russell Smith produced the red card well he knows he made a bad attempt at the tackle look at the strength of this man though see how he shifted the ball away he fended off Fallon so he could get the ball out to Connolly tremendous play but once again Leeds were caught on the blind side failing to move up so Farrell the man with a very strong run who created the try now with the opportunity to score his second successful kick of this 1995 charity shield oh and he gets it over but only just andrew farrell we're gonna have an eight points to nil advantage and leads down to 12 men vasilikopoulos sent off well this is the incident this is just crazy absolute craziness why on earth he had to do that he knew the try was going to be scored and the referee, Russell Smith, is right. That was just madness. I know he missed a tackle before. He would have been very frustrated, but professional footballers have to keep control. He failed to do that, and Leeds really are now facing an uphill battle. So 8-0, they trail Leeds. Kemp restarts. And Hugh McGann, the Leeds coach, will have to reorganise very quickly. Leeds are down to 12 men, and four men there were attracted in to pull Simon Horton down. Ten minutes of the match gone. We're going to head 8-0. Leeds with a man sent off. Sensational start to the new season. Well, we said that it was going to be a problem with having a, a big fellow like Marcus Vasilikopoulos playing in the halfback position, but now he's off the field. Perhaps Tony Kemp will go into the halfback position. Twigamala spent a long summer in New Zealand and he has lost none of his strength. 
Or maybe they'll bring James Lowes out of the pack. Of course, James Lowes has played halfback. Lovely kick through that by right to Robinson, who read it brilliantly. And he gets the pass away to Skerritt, out the back door from Skerritt. This is Simon Horton. He finds Henry Ball. This now Gary Connolly. Connolly beats the tackler and gets it out to Radlinski. Radlinski chipped it up. Alan Tate got a hand to it, but he couldn't hang on. Radlinski gets possession back, and it's six tackles to go for Wigan. Right with that little darting run. Hall, this is intense pressure from Wigan. Skerritt, Skerritt so close, four men haul him down. And Alan Tate gets a hand on the ball, and the referee gives Wigan the penalty. Tate thinking that he had the hand trapped by Skerritt. Well, Skerritt wasn't going to let go of it. He knew that the outcome would probably be just that. Tate saying, look, I couldn't move my arm. It was caught there by the big prop forward, Kelvin Skerritt. Skerritt, a little bit of a smile on his face. But look at the chip over. Nigel Wright is back with a bang. Superb understanding. Robinson knew that that move was going to be on. And look at the support play there. They're running hot at Wigan. A lot of people have criticised them in the off-season for not getting the checkbook out. But when you've got wonderful youngsters like this fellow, Redlinski, they really do have some great talent. And that's where it went back to six. Another mistake from Leeds. Problems all around. Andrew Farrell kicking a la Botica. Two from two. Left-footed style, though, from Andy Farrell. And he's kicked his third out of three. Familiar picture, Wigan ahead, 10-0. This is the reason why the penalty was there. He did labour the point, though, didn't he, Alan Tate? Trying to slow things down. Professional foul, trying to make sure that all the Leeds players could position themselves on the goal line. To make sure the defence was solid, but... In the process, he gave away a penalty, an easy two points to Andrew Farrell. And as Eddie mentioned, Leeds really do look as though they're in a lot of trouble. Yes, they have problems. Bill Arthur can tell us more. Well, even before the season's truly started, that sending off of Marcus Vasilikopoulos does create problems for Hume again and for Dean Bell when he gets here because Graham Holroyd's out for a long time. Now, he, of course, would be the obvious choice, but he's got a shoulder injury, a bizarre viral complaint in his shoulder joint, which could keep him out for weeks, possibly even months. So that's uh, a real problem for Leeds at this early stage of the season. Yes, problem for Leeds, but they do actually have a penalty here now. Jason Robinson called back by the referee's whistle. Well, Henry Paul did not play that football with the foot. Quite a lot of professionals. Well, the last season... Well, it's, we'll an area, it's an area that Greg McCallum has decided will tighten up. And it needed to be. You see Wigan trying to get on with it, but he failed to touch with the foot. Therefore, the penalty forthcoming. He knows it. There's little areas of the game that the uh, referee's coaching director, Greg McCallum, is tightening up this season. Not only that, Eddie, it was great to see Russell Smith. He'd never any doubt about the trip. Straight away, red card off. That's what I like to see from referees. Paul Cook, the goal kicker for Leeds then, bang in front. First points of the season for Leeds, courtesy of the boot of 19-year-old Paul Cook. Academy and Alliance star, captain of the reserve team, which won the title last season. And Wigan have tried to catch Leeds napping by kicking off quickly. And the referee has adjudged Alan Tate to have knocked that ball on. And on first sight, that looked a little harsh. That went backwards. Yes, but was the first impact with the ball going forward. It may have drifted back. Either way benefit of the doubt has gone towards Wigan well, not the best start by this Leeds outfit they wanted to show so much to their new coach Hugh McGahn as yet they failed to impress Cassidy with that little driving run in this now is Andrew Farrell this lad is a colossus come on, Henry, come on. 
20 years of age, that's all. It's difficult to believe, but that's exactly how young he is. And he's a veteran at 20. Big problem with the Leeds defence, though, when they're going to Farrell, they're going too high on it. Man out wide, Walinski screaming for that ball. Connolly, hauled down by Mercer, helped out by Fimilo. Murdoch gets the ball away. Skerritt bounces off the chest of Mercer. Drop goal attempt from Nigel Wright. And he's been given it. Referees awarded it. One point for Nigel Wright. Cool, calm and collected. In all the time in the world, Leeds certainly didn't expect something like that. Well, he's on fire. A lot of points to prove. When he went to Wakefield, went from Wakefield to Wigan. Two seasons ago, he was going to be the real superstar. Didn't work out that way, but I think we may see the full potential of Nigel Wright blossom this season. 11 points to two then. Wigan ahead. Simon Horton with the kickoff. It's from the kickoff, fielding the kickoff, running it back. And, well, Neil Harmon is lifting the leg. Cassidy picks himself up, plays the ball to Hall, and this now is Cowie. Oh, and Cowie gives the ball away to Kemp. Leeds have it back. 17 and a half minutes gone, 11-2. Wigan back on course. Leeds playing with a man short. Vasilikopoulos, the acting scrum half, sent off after just 10 minutes. Not the best start of the season for the men from Yorkshire. But making a fight of it nonetheless. Lowe's the dummy half, for sure. Long pass finds Kemp. Kemp tries to get the ball away to Iro, succeeds, but as Iro received that pass, he was tackled immediately by Connolly. Here's Mercer. Last tackle here for Leeds. Still 10 metres short, Alan Tate going down the short side. And the ball, I think, went straight into touch. It'll be the turnover. No, the referee's pulling the scrum back. Must have been a good kick from Tate. Well, not really. I think he took the wrong option on the last tackle. Leeds could well have done to get that ball high. It was a wasted effort there from the fullback, Alan Tate. Did this ball bounce in the field of play after it was kicked? Not in my book. No, mile over. Here's Connolly. Thought about the long pass out wide to Robinson. Eventually took the tackle and passed short to Robinson, who escapes the clutches of George Mann. Well, he loves playing against Leeds, Robinson, doesn't he? But this Leeds, is Andy Farrell Leeds the field there. They're falling for the trap again. They are going far too high. They've got to have one downstairs and then one coming in over the top. Cowie was on the inside of Cassidy and gets Wigan into the Leeds half. Martin Hall, the dummy half, finds Skerritt with a forward pass. Came a little bit too soon there, did a big prop forward, Skerritt. No doubt about it, that it was forward. He knows it as a hooker as well. Right on the halfway line, Russell Smith with the line to judge whether it was forward or not. That's a style that Wigan do play, though. They take the gamble, it gives them that extra yard. So often can make the break. So that's a better run for Leeds, and he gets the ball away also. But the impact of the tackle from Radlinski, Leeds surrender the possession again. Just panic football from Leeds, I'm afraid, trying to get the ball away. When really they should just calm things down. They really have not got into the swing of things. Midway through the first half, five handling errors to three in Leeds' favour. Cowie just has a, a rueful look then at uh, George Mann. Here is Nigel Wright through the gap for Twigamala, who escaped the clutches of Cummins. Paul Cook is there, so to Tate. Twigamala just hands it on a plate to Robinson. 
Robinson on a typical dancing run, support there from Farrell, over the top to Skerritt, they're loaded out on the left-hand side, Murdoch to Horton, good tackling back by Fallon and Iro, and they claim he lost the ball, referee says play on, Murdoch over the top to Martin Hall, Martin Hall inside to Connolly, and Connolly with another try, bringing it back behind the post, oh, and taking the mickey, doesn't alter things for Wigan admittedly they're against 12 men but they are scoring almost at will again this was a good tackle with Fallon and Iroh straight onto it but once again you can see they're very slow to get on the blind side and it's young Murdoch that picks it up it's an unusual pass they go to the open and then Murdoch realizes that again look at that Iroh has moved up on his own Beautiful ball back inside from the hooker. Easy. Throws the dummy. Rubs the salt well and truly into the wound. Now, did he let go of the ball? Well, 50-50. He still had a fingertip to it. Russell Smith gave him the benefit of the doubt. But look at the thinking of this youngster. He knows that Iroh has moved up. That means that he's only one-on-one. -on -one superb ball back on the inside look at the skill here the dummy oh well he's taking the mickey there gary connolly isn't he right in front of the posts no problems for andy farrell flags go up that's uh, four from four for farrell and we're going to head by 17 points to two So the Grand Slam winners of last season, back in business. They lost three Charity Shield matches in succession, 88, 89 and 90, against Widnes. It gave belief to the theory that Wigan are slow starters. Look at that scoreline. I don't think they're slow starters anymore. They really do think quick, don't they? Even the youngster there, a lot of people thought that without Sean Edwards in this Wigan side, there's a bit of a problem. There you see the possession tells the story, doesn't it? But Wigan are playing out their full complement of six. Leeds have failed to do that. Well, they've been disrupted as well by the sending off of a Silicopolis. That is not helping their cause. But we've seen so often in the past that a side with only 12 men, they do lift their game. Well, I'm afraid they're going to have to do it very quickly. And they're not going to do it with doing grabbing at the shirt like that their defense has gone all to pieces i'm afraid andy farrell picks himself up plays it to martin hall martin hall drills it down the field and alan tate picks up well it's a day of charity on sky sports today because coming up next the littlewoods pools charity shield blackburn rovers against everton from wembley that's live and exclusive on sky sports also a little bit too impetuous there, the loose forward Andrew Farrell. He was virtually striking before that ball was placed to the ground. Alan Tate keen to get on with the game. Farrell had the left foot back well and truly to kick. Well spotted there by Russell Smith. Lowes the dummy half. Neil Harmon is the runner over the halfway line. Good strong run. The referee spots a swinging arm in the tackle. Neil Cowie was right over the top. He didn't miss him either. There you see it. Collects with the top of the head. Russell Smith in a great position to see it. Harmon was in a great position to feel it. Not the best penalty, though, from Leeds as uh, Neil Cowie holds the arm up and says, yes, it was me. Now then, Neil Harmon again. Brave run from the Leeds prop forward. Here's the other one, Milo, almost escaping the clutches of Horton. That's a better run from the forwards. That should lift them. The 10 metres from the line. But they have a penalty now. Do Wigan, because again, Leeds have not played the ball properly. You've got to roll that ball back, and the foot must touch, and it's not there. They'll soon learn. The directive from the referee's boss, Greg McCallum. 
But there's a mistake from Wigan. They haven't found touch with the penalty. No contact with the foot. For those that are new to our game, you must make contact with the foot like that. Fallon had a good season last time round for Leeds did Jim Fallon. 24 tries, his best return in the paid ranks. Good run, good run from George Mann, tackling back from Jason Robinson. Leeds getting on with it quickly, for sure, into the arms of Kemp. He looks right and three of them have overrun him. There's nowhere for him to go now and he loses the ball. Lack of communication in the amber and blue. Well, it's always going to be a problem when you have a new player in your ranks. But he's the man that Leeds have got to start looking towards. Remember, Vasilikopoulos sent off early in this match. Leeds down to 12. And the Kiwi, Tony Kemp, really has to roll up the sleeves. He's got to start directing out there. Leeds, of course, without Gary Schofield. He's still suspended. Release the ball! Schofield on suspension, but he also is carrying a bit of a knock, I understand, from Henningley. So he might not be ready for the start of the season next week. The start of the Centenary League season, that is. Alan Tate, very narrow in goal area here in Dublin today, and Tate content to let that ball just run dead. Wouldn't be happy with that kick, Farrell knows it was far too strong but this is where Leeds really do have to work hard they've got to keep control of this football and try to apply the pressure to this Wigan defence not going to be easy with a scoreline at 17-2 but it's not out of their grasp here's a match winner for Leeds Iro not the best pass but it was made a good ball and so was that and this now is Alan Tate chiming in he gets the ball away to Cummins but look at the way Wigan tackled back. Twigamala and Robinson track back all the time then. And Leeds now have the penalty. Robinson the judge to have had hands on as the tackle player got to his feet. Well done, Russell Smith. You could see clearly there that the big fella Twigamala took all the time in the world. Robinson was on hand to help. It's a ploy that all the professional players use. And I'm glad to see that the referee are picking it up quickly. 28 minutes gone, some more pressure here then for this Wigan line. Leeds in possession in the shape of Fai Milo. They're just three or four metres from that Wigan try line. And it's with Kemp. And through the dummy, fooled nobody. But Wigan caught offside. Kemp takes the quick penalty, and it's a try. Quick thinking from Tony Kemp. Wigan, I think, standing round, questioning the decision, and Kemp picked it up, played it to himself, and snuck over for the try. Good play from Kemp, quick thinking. Leeds coming back, maybe. Tremendous play there. Russell Smith gave them the benefit of the doubt. He let play on the advantage. He knew that Wigan were well and truly offside. You can see him blowing the whistle now. Wigan turned around and started, look at that. Skerritt's talking to the referee. Kemp goes over for the simplest of tries. Well, let's not take anything away from him. He really was thinking very, very quickly indeed. You cannot turn around and talk to the referee. And the Wigan coach, Graham West, will have plenty to say about that one. Offside, look at them. You're kidding, ref. Kemp says, thank you, I'll take the four. And surely, that will soon become six. Just what Leeds needed. Tony Kemp on his debut for the club he's joined. Joined from Castleford after a spell in the summer with the South Queensland Crutchers and his old coach, Daryl Van Der Velde. It's now Paul Cook from Bang in front. No problems for the teenager. Flags go up, and it's 17 points to eight. Gary Connolly is the man that circled. He was the man that was caught. He really did sprint off when they played the ball. Russell Smith allowing the advantage. It didn't come, but it did now. Super thinking. But as I mentioned, Graham West will have plenty to say to his charges over that. New Skerritt. Zealand international, Tony Kemp. Gary Connolly, the man who was penalised by Russell Smith. And as you say, Steve-O, interesting at training this week for Wigan after that. Well, he's as near to a perfectionist, isn't he? And that's got to be a penalty. Interfering at the play of the ball. Well, lead 
Leeds wanted to something to lift them. Kemp's given it to them. And you can see the, the arm of Martin Hall dislodging that football. Well spotted. He's having a good game, is Russell Smith. Keeping a good tight control of this match. It's James Lowe's the dummy half, and here now is Kemp, the try scorer. He hands it on to George Mann. Penalties heavily in Leeds' favour at the moment, seven to three. Forshaw, good run from Forshaw that. Lowe's the dummy half again. This is Iroh. What a game Iroh had at Headingley last December, remember, when Leeds toppled Wigan and threw the championship race open for a wee while. Man, for sure, Kemp. The run out was Alan Tate, and Kemp tried to find him with the kick through, but a good save from Martin Hall here. It was a planned move, but the hooker positioned himself well. Tate, as Eddie described, was really chiming through on that. It was pretty high as well from Kemp. Certainly made his mark then. And so was that. Well, he got away with it the first time, but not on that occasion. Swinging arm. Smith. No hesitation to give the penalty. Well, he was all fired up. Probably frustrated because the kick didn't go as planned. So here come Wigan again with Neil Cowie. But that's better defence from Leeds. Cowie and Mercer having a right old go at each other. Mercer leaves Cowie to do the talking, gets stuck into the tackling again alongside George Mann and James Lowes, who briefly lost his mouth guard. Here's Skerritt. That's better defence from Leeds. They're moving up as one unit in the straight line. Murdoch to Twigamala, swatting the tackles away, handing it on a plate to Robinson, who has to backtrack and run across the face of this Leeds defence, gets it away to Paul, who finds Horton, and there's a huge hole for Horton. Horton's in for the try. Well, the performance of the likes of Horton and Radlinski and Nigel Wright and Craig Murdoch today tells you in a nutshell why Wigan have not delved into the bank for replacements. It's all about second effort, isn't it? Look at the Twigamala, not the best attempt there from Cummings. Gets the ball away. This guy just never gives in, does he? How many players would say there's nowhere to go, but he goes looking, he draws the man. Beautiful pass there, and look at the big fella stride out. Carries the ball in the left so he can fend the fullback Tate with the right hand. This is what's the big problem. There you see Cummings going far too high. You can't afford on Twigamala. Determination, acceleration, look at that. The pass at the right time. What a superb pass from the fullback, Henry Paul. And look at Horton, determination personified. Simon Horton scored the last of the 12 tries against Leeds at Old Trafford, where he was a substitute. The academy captain. Now very much part and parcel of the first team, as is Andrew Farrell. Wigan rolling them off the production line with monotonous regularity. And that's his worst kick of the day. No reward for that. But Wigan have four points added to their 17. They're now on 21 and leads eight. There are all the crosses, six leads players, and you'd think they'd be able to put Robinson away. Do they? No. A lot of work to be done with this Leeds outfit still. Their new coach, Hugh McGahn, of course, Dean Bell to join them shortly. But look at the determination, the defence completely all at sea. You can't afford to have six players like that and not put one player to the deck. Four tries last season for Simon Horton, one now in 95-96. Wigan, this is the ninth charity shield. Wigan's eighth leads first. Wigan have won three and lost four previously. 21 points to eight. Less than five minutes to go to half time. Leads down to 12 men. It's always a struggle with 13 men against Wigan, never mind with 12. This 
Wigan side won the inaugural charity shield in the Isle of Man a decade ago. Farrell is cut down. Henry Paul was the dummy half. Nigel Wright drills the kick towards the corner flag. Makes valuable metres. The three will put the scrum down 10 metres from that Leeds line. Nigel Wright realising the importance of getting the ball deep. Playing percentage football. They know that they've got a pretty good defence, this Wigan outfit. Hard to get through. He's grown in confidence, Nigel Wright, hasn't he, since he went back home to Wakefield last season. Refound his feet. Well, he did the world of good. Not many teams would have done that. They would have let him just wallow in the lower grades. But not at Wigan. They knew what to do. And at the main same time, it certainly lifted the spirits of uh, Wakefield. But they knew, and more importantly, the fact that Nigel Wright rebuild that confidence. In the past, he's always been trying to do far too much. And we've seen today, he's pacing himself all the way through. Neil Harmon. Great Wigan defence again inside that Leeds half of the field. But that's a penalty to Wigan. They've obviously not played the ball properly again. Well, I think that's three, isn't it, in the match so far? Yep. The message surely should be getting through. I know that both coaches will have plenty to say, not just about the play of the ball incidents. Hugh McGahn will, I think, read the riot attack, but I'm not so sure that the prop forward didn't get a touch to that. Not surprising that uh, he looks a little bit bewildered. He can't work it out. They're not supposed to roll it back with their hand, of course. It's supposed to go back with the sole of the boot. Anyway, it gives the coaches something to think about. I think that Hugh McGahn will be thinking a little bit more than play the balls for this Leeds outfit. It took them a while to get into the swing of things. To their credit, they had a crimson spell for about 15 minutes. Andy Farrell, 20 years old, captain, goal kicker, creator of tries, 23 points to eight, the champions ahead. And the likes of Farrell and Horton and Murdoch and Cassidy, plus the four men that they've got on the bench, they will come off the production line and they'll just be dropped into the situation during this centenary season steve -O, because i was talking to graham west not long ago and he seems to think that it is a time to give the youngsters at central park their chance and on the evidence of what we've seen in the opening 39 minutes today those young guns are going to take the chance with both hands here's one of them simon horton look at him terrific run graham west the wigan coach a man who will put his faith in the youngsters that he's got at central park rather than go to the checkbook if it all fails then they might have a word with their bank manager. Until then, they'll leave it as it is. And maybe if Mr. Lomu is watching, Wigan still do have a checkbook. And of course, Graham West, he served his coaching apprenticeship in the reserve team. And he knows what strength in depth is below the surface at Central Park. Half a minute, plus stoppages to go to half-time. Nigel Wright hoists the kick. The herring after it, Wigan. Oh, good take from Alan Tate. Superb stuff. Look at that. Timing correct. Arms reaching out to shield the ball and bring it in. And a good run there from Fallon. And he caught one for his corner. Cowie certainly slipped a short left one in then. Sini by Milo. Him play. Plays the ball to Lowe's and he finds George Mann. George Mann with support from Tony Kent. Takes on his inside, but Kent dropped it. Tremendous play there, but what an awful effort. All that good work. He knows it as well. He cannot believe it. Pretty warm out there, of course. 
sweaty palms. But he knows it wasn't the best effort. Certainly not out of the skill booklet. Twigamala. Oh. Come on away, release him away! Away! Francis Cummins that time going low down on Twigamala. This is Robinson. He's such an elusive character and such Come strength too. Three release of them him. there to bring the Wigan winger down. We're in stoppage time, a minute gone. Cassidy with the run, loses it. Cummins picks up the pieces, escapes the clutches of Hall. Space ahead of him, but then there's the cherry and white hoop wall. And there's the half-time siren. And Wigan have started, uh, Wigan rather, have started this 1995-6 uh, season where they left off last. Three stars have left Wigan during the summer. No major signings, but at 23 points to eight at half-time of the 1995 Charity Shield, who needs big Melly signings when you have such tremendous young players waiting to come into the big league? There's the statistics from the first half. Leeds having to do a lot of work because of that overwhelming possession statistic at the bottom of the screen. Handling errors, 11, seven of them going Leeds way. And Andy Farrell with a big smile on his face as he leads this Wigan side onto the field for the second half. Young player of the year for the past two seasons. He's only 20. And as we said during the first half, he's a veteran now, isn't he? A veteran of the big league. Great Britain international also. Nigel Wright, well, isn't he happy to be back in the fold? Three tries last Sunday on his return against Warrington. And also in the England squad for the World Cup is Nigel Wright and he too is only 21 this is a young man's game now Leeds with their 12 men preparing to restart the 1995 charity shield and they know that they are well and truly up against it in the second half and I just wonder what Hugh McGowan will have said to them during the halftime break so, the goal charity shield and the money raised here today going in the main to Rwanda. So, a very, very worthy cause. And Leeds get us underway, trailing by eight points to 23 against the all-conquering Wigan side of last season. And I know, Steve, on Sports Saturday yesterday, here on Sky Sports, you said that Wigan could be beaten. Hugh McGann, the Leeds coach, knows the size of the task ahead of him and all the rest now. But it really does seem to me to be business as usual for this team of champions. Well, they're always going to start favourites, weren't they? Even with the fact that they haven't uh, splashed out the checkbook in the off-season. But don't write Leeds off. Leeds will have had a real rollicking from their coach. Hugh McGann will have told them that to go out there and play with a lot of pride, a lot more purpose. And if they get off to a flying start, if they can get a try early in this second half, They've got the stars out there to do it. Some tremendous players in the Leeds ranks. Here's one of them, Jim Fallon. That was a good tackling stink by Leeds, the opening set of six tackles in this second half. They kept Wigan just on the halfway line, and they had to kick for the territory. And George Mann will now try and run that ball up to the halfway line. That's only two tackles gone. That's good play this time from this Leeds outfit. They're now in the Wigan half of the field, courtesy of Neil Harmon. George Mann helps it wide to Tony Kemp. Kemp looking for Forshaw. Gary Mercer at dummy half. Angler run across the face of that Wigan defence again. Last tackle for Leeds. Lowe's. Lowe's on a run on his own. Support there from Tate. Tate's using the referee as a shield. And Tate pats the ball down and blows the chance. Is it six more to go for, Wigan? for Leeds? It is. A Wigan hand got to it. Six more tackles for Leeds. And they might get in here with Fomilo. They have. Great start for Leeds at the opening exchanges of this second half. And Fomilo with the try that puts Leeds back in the hunt, perhaps. Good start for the men from Headingley. It's what they needed. What the doctor ordered, or should we say, the coach Hugh McGahn needed. Beautiful run there by Tate. I thought he was going to make it. The fingertips there. 
Hall tried to get to it again. It finished up there with the centre. Young Cummings got the way. And you can see for once that this Wigan defence was slow to on the inside. The Kiwis combined for Milo in for a try. And it was well worked. Notice how the switch there. George Mann on the inside and a good run. Good combination. Hard to stop there. Bouncing all over the shop here, but Cummings eventually come up with the football after the wonderful run from Tate. Well, the game needed it, but look at the switch here. Back on the inside. Skellish had been pulled across. It was a half gap, and the big fella in. Yeah, Sini for Milo, just what uh, Hugh McGann and the lead supporters wanted right at the start of the second half. Successful with two out of two so far and make that now successful three out of three Paul Cook with the conversion of Parmelo's try and leads very much back in the hunt at the start of this second half watch our man switches the ball back inside for Milo steps goes away well read there you could see they were very slow the wing and defense to move in Skelly didn't move across half gap Beautiful pass there from Lowe's, but look at the step there from Tate. We mentioned just around the kickoff time that Leeds do have the stars, and Alan Tate is certainly one of those. Well, that will give Leeds a lot of hope and a lot of uh, heart for the remaining 35 minutes or so of this charity shield. They look a different outfit, don't they? Running with a lot more vim and vigor. Just wonder whether they can keep it going now, because uh, they start... Well, they started the match pretty promisingly, but then just fell away and allowed Wigan in. They want to really keep the pressure on this Wigan side now, and there's every chance they might do so. Well, that was a good kick and chase. Kemp put it in the open spaces. And the four players down. Henry Paul with the run down the touch line, and he's almost hauled into touch by the jersey, but managed to stay in the field of play. Martin Hall, the dummy half. And a message from the bench of Leeds. They have got to make the tackling sharper. That's what Hugh McGann wants from his outfit. And that wasn't high, it just caught Connolly around the chest and stopped him dead in his tracks. Again, we're going to have to kick from inside their own half. They make good ground, though, courtesy of the boot of Martin Hall. Good thinking from the hooker there. He knew that Wigan were in a lot of trouble. Let's get out of the situation. Cook had failed to drop back. You could see that clearly. Big League Charity Shield underway here. Coming up next here on Sky Sports, we have Blackburn Rovers against Everton. The Littlewoods Pools Charity Shield down at Wembley. A feast of sport for you on Sky Sports today. Later on, of course, the US PGA Golf Championship. This is Gary Massa, good tackling from Gary Connolly. And certainly a much brighter opening six minutes to this second half from Leeds. Well, they're running strongly and they're playing the ball as quickly as possible, trying to catch this wing and defence going backwards. Here's George Mann. Over halfway, George Mann. Ball down on the last tackle. Referee waving the Wigan defence line back Kemp will drill the ball towards the corner and Robinson just lets it pass and finds touch on that far side he knows they're under a little bit of pressure Wigan Robinson quite happy to allow that ball to go into touch they'll get the head and feed just so that the forwards can take a bit of a breather he has been an outstanding opening in the second stanza from Leeds And the word from the touchline is that Hugh McGann is quite happy with the opening seven minutes. He says what he's seeing at the moment is exactly what he wanted. Good tackling. And they're managing to stop Twigamala. Mercy showed the way there. You've got to go low on that guy. Oh, a little bit of a mistake in their own quarter from Wigan. And the pressure from Leeds on them beginning to tell. Good tackling. 
in again from Forshaw on his opposite number. And look at the possession. It suddenly swung Leeds' way, second half. Horton's head jolts back in that tackle. That's the last one. Good stuff from Leeds. And Wright from deep in his own half will have to kick high to relieve the pressure. Fallon's underneath it. Gets its second bounce. And Fallon now will launch another counter-attack from Leeds. The support there from Tate. He skipped through the challenge of Murdoch. Bounces off the chest of Cowie. Gets away from Henry Paul. Finds Neil Harmon. Harmon, good quick hands. This is Francis Cummins. And Cummins eventually takes the tackle from Skerritt. But this is a much better opening to the second half from Leeds. Tate's in there, and that's Kemp. And he fires the pass into the arms of Mercer, who finds Iroh. And Iroh has the strength. And Iroh has the step. And Iroh has the support from Fomino. And it so nearly came off. But Murdoch gets it back for Wigan. Tremendous play there by Leeds, but just a panic pass, unfortunately. Fomino was calling for it. He tried to get it away. It was try time, just over the top of the big fella. But stupor run once again from Alan Tate. Well, Wigan got the penalty though, that's why they're in possession. We mentioned that Hugh McGarn would have told him to go out there and play with a lot of pride, and they're doing that. This is Andrew Farrell. You'll notice that uh, number 15 for Wigan, Terry O'Connor, is on the field. And uh, Kelvin Skerritt is the man who has been withdrawn. This is Twigamala, who gives it to Robinson, who escapes the clutches of Kemp. But eventually leads pull him down, courtesy of Cummins. Connolly to Nigel Wright, the pass was timed brilliantly, and Nigel Wright perhaps snuffs out the Leeds revival. The ball from Connolly open leads up, and Nigel Wright shot through the gap. He timed it to perfection. It's all down to timing. Connolly just hung on to this football, tantalising, dragged the man in, and he could see there was nothing that Familo could do about it, but look at the step there. Enormous step off the left foot, left Alan Tate stranded. Connolly, the skills on show here. See how he said, come short, held off there. Pamilo failed to move out. And the big step sends in Nigel Wright. What a game he's having. Wigan back on course. Five tries already this season for Nigel Wright. The Wigan standoff half. And Andrew Farrell, five out of six. The ball just falling off the little uh, mountain of sand, but Connolly's pass to Nigel Wright was sheer perfection. There was a huge gap for Wright to exploit, and the pass from Connolly allowed him to skate through it with nobody getting a hand on it. Farrell then, five from six, settles himself again. Six from seven for Andrew Farrell, 29-14 to Wigan. Look at the gap there. You parked about ten caravans in that space. Beautiful pass. Oh, dearie me. Sliding defence has to move across. But the skills of right there. The big step off the left foot. So early, left Alan Tate stranded. He's back. Showing the class there, Nigel Wright, that made him at £140,000 two years ago, the most costly teenager in the game. Double substitution for Leeds, Mercer and for Milo off, and Adrian Morley and David Gibbons on. Isn't it amazing, though, that if that last pass from Iro would have stuck to the prop forward for Milo, it would have been perhaps six points to Leeds but they've been shell-shocked once again. How many times do we see this Wigan outfit get put on the rack and they bounce back in the best possible fashion? They score tries. Gibbons and Morley, who are there in the tackling, coming on, and Gibbons is 19 and Adrian Morley is 18. The one thing that you can say about Doug Lawton's reign 
at Headingley, Steve-O, is that he has left some very promising youngsters on the Leeds staff as well. Yes, and I think that we will see that Hugh McGahn will give these youngsters every opportunity. Stardom at Leeds no more will be a passage to the first grade. You've got to earn your place these days when you've got men like Hugh McGahn and Dean Bell in charge. Lowe's was supporting there. But Simon Horton watched him like a hawk, hauled him down. Tony Kemp gets it away to Kevin Iroh. And Iroh shrugs away from Twigamala. Twigamala didn't like that, and he almost tackled Jason Robinson. But here come Leeds with Kemp. Over the shoulder from Kemp out wide. Good run from Cummins, but Robinson and Murdoch there to pull him down. It's the last tackle. And the kick straight into the arms of Martin Hall. Not the best attempt there. Oh, George Mann, clearly mate. That's really where they just go astray. That's where they're missing the skills of Gary Schofield to control things. When they launch the attack, you've got to have someone direct in there. And of course, Tony Kemp is new to this team. It'll take him a while before he gets into the swing of things. Yeah, Leeds today, of course, without Holroyd and Schofield, the men who dictate the pattern, really, with their kicking. Here's Connolly, and now Radlinski. He finds Cassidy. Cassidy to Murdoch, quick hands. Henry Paul escapes the clutches of Harmon. Takes the tackle eventually from Paul Cook and from Adrian Morley. Last tackle here for Wigan. It's with Nigel Wright again. Gets the ball away, does right. Here's Farrell. They're going to run this. We're going to run it. They have Radlinski out wide. They've got Conley down the middle. They've got Farrell in support. And that's breathtaking. That is quite simply, on the last tackle, a breathtaking Wigan try. Leeds hung back and waited for the kick. The kick from Farrell didn't come. He started the move, and Farrell finished it. Once again, Leeds are caught out wide. If at first you don't succeed, then try, try again. They just keep the ball alive. They thought that the big fella was going to kick, but he threw the ball out wide. And you could see there that Fallon had stood back. Cummings had moved up, but the support play was supreme. Beautiful long pass there. Fallon left with two men to look after. Cummings had committed himself. He's too late to get back into the scene. Support on the inside. What a talent this youngster is. Tremendous try from Andrew Farrell. He's preparing now to take the conversion himself. Meanwhile, Nigel Wright will have to leave the field. He's plainly got a problem with the left leg. And he will be reluctant to leave the scene of this uh, Wigan triumph. This is perhaps what happened. He takes the tackle from Adrian Morley and his leg just crunches underneath him. And Nigel Wright will be hoping that that isn't too serious. just helped off the field so Andrew Farrell six goals out of seven attempts left footed style no problem 35 points to 14 Wigan on the way to Charity Shield 95 once again the lead defence caught very tight you can see the gap there that will allow Connolly to go through. Cummings has to go back, but the speed of the centre back on the inside. Well read by the loose forward, Andrew Farrell. Leeds restart, Simon Horton runs it back, and Andrew Farrell now, with that try in the goal, has now scored the most points ever in the Rugby League Charity Shield, beating the 16 scored by David Stevenson of Wigan in 87 and Jonathan Davis's 16 in 1990. Andrew Farrell now has 18 points to his credit. Wright has gone off to be replaced by Rob Smythe. Here is Martin Hall. Leeds 
know that having been beaten by Wigan 69-12 at Old Trafford, that was a record score. And they don't want a record score in this charity shield, but there's a mistake from Henry Paul, the ball sailing out on the full. Don't forget, next Tuesday night, Books and All returns to your screens, 10.30 here on Sky Sports. And on Friday, the big league really does come back. We are there with the start of the centenary season, Workington against Wigan. We'll be live and exclusive from Derwent Park. Wigan again on Sky Sports on Friday. And on Sunday, we'll go to Nosley Road to see the Saints against Bradford Bulls. This, meanwhile, is a try for Leeds, scored by Mike Forshaw. Good work from Tony Kemp, Forshaw in support, hunting the opportunity and taking the four. Great skill from the Kiwi, Tony Kemp. Takes the ball out wide, throws the dummy. Not the best attempt there from the full back. Henry Paul, he knows it as well, but it was superb skill. Just delays, it moves the body around, look at that. They thought it was coming short there, but for sure, did the right thing. He supported on the outside. Great stuff. Notice Henry Paul will come through and commit himself. Not the best attempt. Let's not take anything away from Kemp's ability. Quick play of the ball. Look how he runs the angle. Just a little bit of a shimmy. It was enough. Superb pass. Well supported by the loose forward. Forshaw enjoyed that. Well, that try from Mike Forshaw means that uh, both Leeds new signings now have crossed the whitewash. Forshaw and Tony Kemp. And Paul Cook, a reliable goal kicker also. Three out of three. And he just clips it over with the inside of the boot. That's four out of four for him. 35-20 for Wigan. There you see Henry Paul moves out wide. But you can see the prop forward. Neil Cowie doesn't move across. That's enough for the Kiwi to go back on the inside. Well supported. Thought for one minute there that the referee, Russell Smith, was going to blow up for the forward pass. He was in a good position. Must have been pretty close to it. So Tony Kemp, one of the new Leeds men. Oh, then they tried the short kickoff. Didn't come off. Henry Paul. So Leeds with the penalty on halfway, they can restart quickly and try and catch Wigan Nappy. For sure. Elementary mistake from night from uh, Henry Paul Stevo. Yes, he's having a bit of a nightmare in the second half. He moved across uh, in defence that had uh, the gap there. Pretty hard for the prop forward to move quickly. Kemp took full advantage with the fact that Neil Cowie didn't move in. But they've gone to sleep a little bit, but Leeds really have built up that tempo in the second half. It will bring a little bit of a smile to their coach, Hugh McGahn. Kevin Iro, he's got support there from David Gibbons. It's Wigan's half again in terms of possession. But Leeds, they are certainly on the attack more in this second half. Well, Tony Kemp will be wondering when one of those kicks are going to become successful. I think he's tried about five, and every single one of them has been eagerly accepted by the Wigan defence. A little bit of a high tackle there. Wigan in possession. He got the pass away to Robinson, and Connolly was clobbered by Iro. That's what we call in the business a hospital pass. And what a tackle there from Pallon. He put his body on the line. Pallon on Smythe. This now is Horton, right down the middle. This is Murdoch. This is Cowie. Still going, Cowie. Drags four of the lead players into him to pull him down. Twigamala, Murdoch, and here's Robinson again. Gets the pass away. Oh. Pulled in supremely by Henry Paul. Connolly is tackled. Smythe to Paul again. Little dink over the top. Oh, mistake from Fallon. But he's a judge, Paul, to have knocked on here. 
He's right now, it's Radlinski. Just a little one. That's on the last tackle, so that'll be the handover. Here's Neil Harmon standing in the tackle. But look at this one-handed. Oh, it's absolute perfection, isn't it? He had a couple of dodgy moments with the boot, did Henry Paul, but the way he took that in, balanced it almost on its end. Plenty of skills on display today from both sides, too. It really is pleasing to see Leeds really getting to the swing of things in his second half. And Tony Kemp really has got things fired, and so is the fullback back Tate. Tate attracting 2-2 two -two him, one of them Neil Cowie. Cowie just blowing a bit hard at the moment. This is Kemp, over the top from Kemp, and into the arms there of Gibbons. Gibbons dabs it through, but Murdoch's there. Wasted effort there from Gibbons, the substitute. Murdoch read it well in the sweeping role. Haven't seen much from this guy. <laughs> Wait on. What have you said? Probably heard me. Robinson. Scragged to the floor by Morley. He moved off the mark, Robinson. That's going to be a penalty lead. He moved about five or six metres up the field of play. Not allowed. That's where the tackle's complete. And look at him. Has to be penalised. Not too happy with the fact that he kept hold of the football. Leeds wanted to get on with it. Nick Fazard's on. He has replaced George Mann. This is James Lowe's. Twigamala grits his teeth and drills Lowe's into the ground. For sure again. Henry Paul going for a ride on his back. Spirited display this from Leeds second half. As you say, Steve, had Vermeiler not dropped that pass, that intended pass, when the scores were getting really, really close, who knows what might have been? Who knows what might be yet? Quarter of an hour to go, 15 points in it. Leeds so close to another try, with Kemp dabs it to the corner, wasted kick. Radlinski picks up the pieces. Right, let's go downstairs to Bill, who's got the injured Nigel Wright with him. Let's get a check on his condition. We'll come back to Bill and Nigel Wright in a moment. Meanwhile, referee's whistle is blown. Having a word with Kevin Iro. See, he's, he's got the, the attack to the head, hasn't he? Well, he gave him a facial. Can do without it. Good work from the touch shots there, trying to rip his head off. Hard enough without that. Simon Horton. Beg pardon, it wasn't Simon Horton. It was Terry O'Connor. Here's McCassidy. Referee, I don't think was happy with the play of the ball again. Oh no, for shouting. For talking and chatting. Well, Cowie's been at it all this second half. You can see he's not happy after he got tackled. Turned to the touch and more or less indicated perhaps he needed a white stick. <laughs> Or something like that. Well, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't too happy. It wasn't Neil Cowie. So, for dissent, Leeds get the penalty. Lowers is the dummy half. Here's Harmon. Run strongly all day, Harmon. Good tackling by O'Connor, and a penalty surely against Connolly. Well, surely he's got to send him now. Leeds take. A What's quick... wrong with the sin bin? Well, they take a quick penalty, and here's Four Shaw looking for another four. But you're right. Connolly pushed him down when he got to his feet. It was a professional foul. Here's Harmon. Now Kemp to Iro, pops the ball up. Oh, and so close then for Fozard. Nick Fozard was so, so close. Look at this. Well, he can't believe it, can he? It? it just popped up for him. Open line. Iro had done the right thing, popped up a superb pass. Well, that's two tries, and had the ball stuck, well, you can work it out for yourself. 
could be maybe 12 points. 35-32. Instead of that, it's 35-20. That's Simon Horton. Now, Martin Hall to Craig Murdoch, to Henry Paul, Radlinski to Connolly. Back to Paul again. Has the ability to just pick the ball out of the air, doesn't he, Henry Paul, and make passes stick. Twigamala. Oh, stood in the tackle as he fell, released the pass, and brought Johnson into it. Here's Murdoch. Johnson felt that as well. It was a crunching tackle from James Lowe's. Farrell. Little chip through from Farrell. It bounced kindly for him. Murdoch out to Cassidy. Another try, Wigan. Right behind the posts. Mike Cassidy. And Wigan just flicking the ball round here, almost at will. You talk about skills of a rugby league player, there's none better than this man. Such a big fellow, neat little chip over the top. Superb pass, flicked it out over there. Second rower, Cassidy, leafly accepts the four. They always come back with a counter punch. All the time in the world, look at that Leeds defense. They hung back. They really didn't commit themselves for the ball. Good play by Murdoch on hand there. And once again, we see the good support play from this Wigan outfit coming to the fore. But they didn't apply any pressure. No work from the second marker. They hang back. Look at that. Swinging. Flick pass. Murdoch out to the second row. He likes that. Superb stuff. Nick Cassidy with the try, and this uh, conversion attempt from Farrell could equal the goal-kicking record in the Charity Shield, and does. That's eight for Farrell. 41 points to 20 for Wigan, and he equals David Stevenson of Wigan's eight goals in 1987, does Andrew Farrell. Well, a lot of people thought that Wigan perhaps might struggle without Prano Botica, and up steps the giant frame of Andrew Farrell to fill that spot and hasn't done a great job. Neil Cowie, by the way, has been withdrawn because he was uh, just talking a little bit too much to the touch judge in Graham West, not wanting to risk any possible red cards. Well, he was losing his cool somewhat. A couple of occasions he went looking for players who'd been involved in the tackle. Just lost his concentration. That's good work from the coach, Graham West. He knows how important and how tough it's going to be throughout this season. No point in taking the risks like that. Right, let's get downstairs. I think we found Nigel Wright now. He's with Bill. Nigel Wright is flat on his back on the touchline with uh, ice on his knee. Just how serious is that knee injury? It shouldn't be too bad. Um, I think it's more precautionary than anything. But uh, the game will be going so well for you. It must be a bit of a sickness. Just a bit, yeah, but the lads are doing well out there by themselves, so uh, obviously I'll get it rested up and off and right for next week. So you're happy with the way it went for you thus far? Thus far, yeah, obviously. To continue from last week, uh, another two today, so I'm quite happy. And from the Wigan point of view today, as he gets a shower from his teammates? Well, obviously the lads have done well, you know, we've come here to do a job and uh, we've done that, and um, we're happy with that. To be fair, it, the early part of this second half, Leeds certainly did tighten their game up and make you work a bit harder, didn't they? We knew they were going to come out strong, obviously they had to play catch-up rugby and uh, we knew that, obviously they scored early on, but uh, we've settled the ship again and uh, things are looking quite good at the moment. Nigel Wright, most laid-back character on the ground at the moment, in discussion with Bill Arthur, and Andrew Farrell is the man of the match in the Charity Shield 95, and no wonder, it's been a great performance from Farrell. And a good performance from Wigan, a gutsy display from Leeds second half. That will give their supporters and coaching staff some hope. 14, Marvin Golden is on there, you might have noticed. This now is a chance for Matthew, no for Matthew Knowles. He has come on for Simon Horton. Murdoch gets the pass away to Paul. Paul to Hall. Hall to the man of the match, Farrell. Farrell gets the ball out to Smythe. And Smythe goes round Golden and dropped it. And knock on is 
the decision, and rightly so. Yeah, he lost it. Good decision there from the referee, Russell Smith. Ably supported by the touch judge, and of course the in-goal touch man, there you see him in the background. That's the reason why they're there, to ensure that fair play is seen to be done. Marvin Golden. There's the touch, the in-goal judge, not the touch judge, the in-goal judge, who just uh, confirms and confers with the referee for any questionable decisions in the in-goal area. Obviously on the same communication wavelength for that uh, no try. Kemp. Good strong run, good strong tackle too. Seen some nice touches from the Kiwi Tony Kemp. It will certainly be an asset to this lead side. Oh, there's a couple of nice touches. He managed to hang on to the ball. Nowhere for him to go. He was out tight to the touchline, so he just drilled it along the ground. Nowhere to go, really. Realises that the game is well and truly over. But he can feel very pleased with his performance. Doesn't look, to me, 100% fit. But I'm sure that will come over the next couple of weeks. Well, he's been playing in the summer with the uh, Queensland Crushers, hasn't he? And no doubt getting a knock or two from the Winfield Cup. <laughs> Smite. Rob Smite. Player of the tournament in the Wigan Sevens just a couple of weeks ago. Andrew Johnson. Strong run from Johnson. Hall was there in support. Although they're 41-20, Hall just showing a touch of frustration there that the pass didn't come. This now is Matthew Knowles. New faces on both sides on the substitutes bench today. New names. No doubt will become more and more familiar as the centenary season wears on. Little over five minutes ago, Wigan on the last tackle. Paul Connolly gets the pass away to Johnson. Johnson finds Radlinski. Radlinski to Smythe. Smythe does well. Radlinski pops it up again. Smythe will keep the movement going. Looking for a long pass out wide. He finds Farrell. And Farrell belts it into the face almost of O'Connor. And O'Connor goes out wide. And he misses Robinson. The ball went backwards. It's play on. This is Twigamala. Twigamala to Connolly. Connolly has got Farrell, he has got support, the support rolling forward, and there's a try for O'Connor, Terry O'Connor. They moved it from left to right and back again. It was supreme skill rugby league football, and Terry O'Connor over for his try. Pretty to watch. Keep the ball alive. Look how Henry Paul just held the ball up there. But great work there from Gary Connolly. They put him under a lot of pressure. Smythe, Radlinski back on the inside. Smythe worked hard here. Beautiful pass over the top. Look at that. You see how Farrell just drew in the man. This kid did well, didn't he? The youngster. Not the best pass. Robinson gets it away. Twigamala, the spinning pass out wide. And Connolly, look at that. Shows the dummy. See how he attracted two men to him. And the substitute O'Connor gleefully accepts a four point. That is Wigan at its best. Look at O'Connor there. Superb passing. There was nothing that they could do about that. Iro, nothing, using the shoulder. And that man gleefully accepts the four. 85,000 pounds signing from Salford just 12 months ago. He made his home debut against Leeds at uh, prop last September. And he is the man of the match, Andrew Farrell. This goal will make it a new goal-kicking record in the charity shield. But he misses it. So there's no new record for Andrew Farrell, but it's a new record score for Wigan in the charity shield, 45-20, beating their best highest score against Halifax in 87, 44-12. 
So another record-breaking day for Wigan. Record score in the Premiership final last May against Leeds. Record score in the Charity Shield this August against Leeds. Well, he may have, he may have missed a chance to break that record, but what a great game he's had. Andrew Farrell really has come alive in this game. He's worked he's hard. He's come of age, hasn't he? Well, he works hard in defence. He knows when to run out wide. Got beautiful skills. Good kicking game. Good passing game. He really is a great talent. But once again, we've seen our Wigan. They share the work. They get put on the rack every now and again. They roll the sleeves up and get involved. They work for each other. It really is a great sight to see when this Wigan machine is on the roll. We're inside the last two minutes of the uh, curtain raiser for the new season, Steve-O, and I think the message is out to the rest in the big league. They have to be stopped somehow again. And it's a big job. Look at the way the substitute there, Matthew Knowles, picked out Alan Tate and pulled him down. They're all keen, they all want to get involved, they all want their chance. The Leeds a spirited second half. Good strong run here from Fossard. Good play by the youngster. As you mentioned earlier, Eddie, the fact that both sides have got a lot of cream in the lower ranks. These youngsters on show. They'll be enjoying it. Both coaches quite happy to give youth a chance late in this game. Kemp to Golden. Kemp takes the pass from Golden in return. Releases the ball. And they also release it in the shape of James Lowe's, but straight into the arms of Cassidy. Cassidy is grounded by Ivan. Did well to keep in there to the second row of Cassidy. Tireless worker. He's tackled all throughout this game. Murdoch to Paul to Connolly. Connolly kicks into open territory, looking for Jason Robinson. Didn't just quite come off, a little shrug of the shoulders from Connolly. Nice little move, though, by the centre, Connolly. Just clipped it through. Got inches off Robinson getting the toe to it. He's had a fine game, too. Some superb time passes. Into stoppage time. This first match of 95-96 season. Wigan, having won the Locker Cup last week, will collect the charity shield this week. Record-breaking day here in Dublin. They now have the most wins in the competition of four. They've recorded again the highest score. Equaled most goals in the shape of Andrew Farrell, who has also now taken the record for most points in the match. So another record-breaking day for this team from Central Park. Kemp to Iro. Leeds trying to finish with a bit of a flourish. Full marks to them for that. Gibbons is grounded by Hall. This is Lowe's. Lowe's just holding the ball up and getting over there for the try. No, it's on the last tackle. It's the last short. tackle, he's just short. Inches, but he was definitely short. There you see it. <laughs> Interference at the play of the ball. Connolly says, let's get on with it in the dying seconds. O'Connor rolls on his back, gets to his feet, and is immediately clobbered by Tony Kemp. Oh, the two 17s, Fossard on Knowles. Big crash and a big collision. Murdoch to Paul. Here's Farrell. That's the halfway line. Two minutes of stoppage time play. Twigamala to Murdoch. There's the siren. Two minutes of stoppage time. That's all that was necessary. And Wigan have won the 1995 goal charity shield here at the Royal Dublin Showground. There's the man of the match, Andrew Farrell, the Wigan captain.
level with the goal kicking record for this competition big pal still with Mike Forshaw obviously his opposite number in the lead side and so Leeds go pot hunting not just in April and May but in August as well Steve-O yes it was a poor performance from the Leeds outfit in the first 40 minutes they know that we just saw a glimpse of Tony Kemp he certainly will be an asset to this Leeds outfit Hugh McGarm now is well aware of the task ahead of him and I'm sure that he will have realized that the gaps were there this Wigan defense in the second half was put on the rack Leeds did come out firing in the second half let's hear from Andrew Farrell the man of the match the Wigan captain Andy you're just saying there hard work it is yeah I mean uh, we've done a lot of training through the summer well, it's always hard uh, when you play your first match, there's nothing like match fitness. And uh, I think certainly in the early part of the second half, Leeds really did make you work. They did, yeah, we expected that, but I don't know why we didn't switch on to it. I mean, uh, they could have come back from that, Leeds, and we'll have to work on that next week. Because it's unusual for, for Wigan to get caught at the start of a half, isn't it? It's normally the other way around. Yeah, we're normally uh, very intense at the start of each half, but uh, we know credit to Leeds, they only had 12 men, but they fought out all the way through the match, not just at the start of the second half. But overall, a very satisfactory preparation for the start of the new big league. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a few mistakes what's gone in, but overall, we all played well and we all stuck at it and a uh, very pleased with the performance. And personally? Um, just, just glad to get a bit of match fitness under me and uh, hope we could take it off from there. Andy, thanks very much indeed. Yeah, the man of the match, he'll soon be collecting the 1995 Charity Shield, uh, a trophy sponsored by Waterford Crystal. And Hugh McGann, the Leeds coach, having a word with Henry Paul. Let's hear from Henry Paul's opposite number, Alan Tate, now. Alan, what's the, the verdict uh, from the Leeds point of view? Well, the Wigan machine just keeps rolling along. You know, we expected nothing else. The well-drilled club, you know, that the players have brought in have fitted in well. We've uh, had a new start, you know, new coaches on the scene. They've changed a lot of things, and it's just going to take a while to get ready. But, you know, the main thing is we stuck in right to the end. Uh, we'll try to keep the score down which we could, but we've got a lot of work on. But to lose a, a player sent off so early in the game, I mean, that's shooting yourself in the foot, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't help. We, you know, we, have, we set the rustle, you know, it's a bit of a showpiece, but as he said, you know, the new rules, strict rules, he's got to do what he's told, and uh, it spoiled it a bit for us, you know, with a player less. We couldn't cover as much. But I think at half time, Hugh McGann told you to tighten up on the defence, make sure the tackles were, were really going in, and you did that at least. Yeah, well, you know, that's what he was, we worked on, that was what we all I wanted to work on, was the market play and defence, and we stuck at it, and at it, but as you say, a man sure, it takes its toll. Alan, thanks very much. So Andrew Farrell leads the Wigan side up to receive the 1995 Waterford Crystal Charity Shield from John Foley, sales and marketing director of the company. And that now will adorn the trophy room at Central Park. season is 80 minutes old and we're gonna already have their first trophy of the campaign Steve I hope they treat the piece of glass a little more kindly than they do the pieces of silverware uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a change uh, well there is a silverware for man of the match what a great performance from Andrew Farrell great talent they really are a great side and as Alan Tate mentioned the Wigan machine keeps rolling along and I think when Andrew Farrell was talking to Bill there it's quite clear that they're not fully satisfied by this performance especially in the second half Leeds did cut them up quite a few occasions especially early in that second half and that will give the Leeds side and their fans plenty of hope I know that Wigan coach Graham West will work very hard to ensure that the defensive lapses do not occur throughout this season. They had a very professional outfit. And that looks a dodgy situation with uh, Neil Cowie with his hand inside. Well, they've not dropped much today, Wigan, and let's hope they don't drop the glassware. It's another happy day for the men from Central Park. They have won in record-breaking fashion here again. They're singing. 
on the pitch at Dublin and Wigan as I think Alan Tate said the machine keeps rolling along they've put the gauntlet down again for the rest in the big league and the race for the centenary season gets underway next weekend but the message to the rest is that Wigan are still very much in business Wigan have won the 1995 Charity Shield with a record-breaking score. 45 points to 20. Tries from Nigel Wright, two. He went off injured. Connolly, Horton, Farrell, Cassidy and O'Connor. Farrell with a record equaling eight goals, plus the Nigel Wright drop goal and leads 20 points. Tries from Kemp, Farmilo and Forshaw. Cook kicked four goals. They had a man sent off, Marcus Vasilikopoulos. 5,700 here. A great day in Dublin and the two coaches of Wigan and Leeds, now with Bill Arthur, beginning with the Wigan boss, Graham West. Graham, you must be uh, very satisfied with that pipe opener of the season. Yeah, they played very well. I was pleased with uh, all of the players. Uh, just one or two warriors, Nigel White with, a, with an ankle problem. Um, but they've worked very hard over the off-season, so uh, you know, that's only to be expected. They've hardly had a break, in fact, have they, during the close season? Well, they got a month just a month and a lot of them didn't take the month they worked through and uh, only took the two-week holiday so it shows that uh, yeah, they're keen enough to start again now early in the second half maybe was the one period of the game where i think leeds really did have you thinking didn't they they did but we we made a few mistakes and, and gave them possession and, and they used it very well so uh, you know, we've got something to work on as well it's uh, you, know, you can't expect to have 100 percent of the uh, possession uh, the other team gets it and when when they have it you've got to defend well and we didn't do that I think a lot of people, well, some people maybe were surprised that during the summer months you weren't out recruiting new players. I think we saw today exactly why. Well, we have a, a good crop of youngsters, as has uh, been shown today, and uh, the last two weeks in the sevens and the Locker Cup against Warrington. We have a good crop of youngsters, and we want to use them and give them the opportunity. Um, if we don't, the young players that we sign in the future will, will not want to come and play for us. So, uh, you know, we want to give them the opportunity. And, uh, of course, they're taking it well. Graham, thanks very much indeed. Hugh McGann, the uh, member of the Leeds coaching team. Hugh, what's the, the verdict on the Leeds performance? Well, obviously, we weren't happy with the I don't think that was it, was it? <laughs> obviously, we weren't happy with the performance, but uh, I was happy we, we tried some things in, in our defensive pattern. That we were broken early in the first half, obviously, but we, we tied it up in the second half after I had a word with them at, uh, at half time. But uh, it shows that we're, we're a long way behind Wigan. Overall, physically, their conditioning work, their, their fitness, and just their, their, their physical strength we're way way behind and we've got a lot of work to do and that's probably not only us but every other team in this competition if we're going to be close to, to catching the likes of Wigan we've got an extreme amount of work to do but some hopeful signs oh yeah definitely uh, with a lot of things that we did change uh, over the, the short period of time that we had something to do we saw some encouraging signs from from a lot of the players it's just of our lack of consistency which we've fallen down and if we can main, maintain some kind of performance over a period of time then we'll become a stronger side Thanks very much indeed, Hugh. Pleasure.